Hello. <laughs> Good morning. It's day 13. Is that right? No. It can't be day 13. It is. It is day 13. Awesome. So, I just had a download of um, everything that I desire. You know, like, it's all coming to fruition and I just feel really good you know like I don't know I just feel great and you know when we go into our shadow when we do the work on the dark parts of ourselves there's so much light <laughs> that shines in. There's so much space for light when we integrate our shadow. So I was talking with a client yesterday and and he says like, what is shadow? And I said, well, you know, it's that part of us that we think that we are not and it's that part of us that we try and try to deny, deny, deny. But it's that part of us that it's the denial of our shadow that separates from our divinity. So you know how we say we are all one and God is everything? Why do so many people say, oh yes, God is everything, and then they say, except that. <laughs> it just, I just find it to be so um, wild that we as logical beings actually feel like it's okay to alienate and to shun and to deny and then to say, oh yes, we are all one, we are peace. Except when we're not. <laughs> I just find that to be really wild. And shadow is the thing that we think that we are not. Shadow is um, the dark part of ourselves. It's the part of ourselves that we think light doesn't penetrate. Shadow is the thing that when we face the light or when we're in the light, we're naturally casting a shadow. So it's these two things that feel like they're opposites, but it's not really about their oppositeness as much as it is about the, the, the line that exists between them that unifies them. That line is us. <laughs> I love it. I think it's so exciting to know that we are actually super lovable, super adorable, super divine. And that's what's got me excited this morning. Yesterday, I was exploring my dark parts and I was reading, um, doing a lot of reading and uh, doing a lot of self-reflection. And I was looking at all my dark parts. And I was making a list of the things that are dark, that I consider dark, you know. And I wanted to explore what it's like to be fully accepting them. It was not easy. And I'm not saying that I've mastered it, but I feel so much better. Like, I remember um, Debbie Ford saying uh, that she, like that moment when she accepted that she's a bitch. And I could, I, for whatever reason, when I was listening to her talk about this, I was looking at her and she's very beautiful and she's very sharp and I thought fuck 
she could be a real bitch. And then I thought, well, how do you feel about that? And I thought, oh, well, more power to her. And I said, I'm not comfortable being that. And then I said, well, why not? Why is it that I can give her that power but not give myself that power? And yesterday I revisited that. And I thought, hmm. How is being a bitch serving me? And then I realized that I don't consider myself to be a bitch. I consider myself to be strong, opinionated, dominating, forceful, aggressive, but not a bitch. So I don't resonate with the word bitch, but I love my power. I love being able to stand in front of an antagonist and to hold my own. I love my ability to stay focused. I love the gifts that I've been given to communicate effectively, to know what it is I want, and to have a clear mind. I love that about myself, and I don't consider that to be bitchy. But other people might, and they can. I won't call myself a bitch because I don't resonate with that word at all. I do consider myself strong, and I appreciate that. So today's affirmation, responsibility. I take responsibility for my own actions, and I take responsibility for my own behaviors, my own way of being fully take responsibility for it, and I love it. And I'm going to practice loving myself every day. I'm kind of extending my affirmations when I'm doing them with you right here, so that's not written in the affirmation, <laughs> but I'm really making them my own right now. That's the phase where I am. I'm willing to accept the co consequences of following my own path. So, so, now this is really interesting because right now I'm noticing my throat chakra is getting a little um, blocked. And it's funny how um, on an unconscious level, right, I'm creating this whole experience. And so I created the throat tickle. And I have to ask myself, why is it that I'm getting choked up when I'm expressing my love for myself, hmm. the psyche, you know, unexplored territory. I'm going to fix that with some water because I don't want to limit my self-expression. I want to be fully expressing myself and realizing myself in my power. So, um, I am willing to accept the consequences of following my own path. So many people will tell me that I'm doing something wrong or that it's not appropriate to do it that way or what gives you the right to do it that way. You know, and I could follow other people's paths, the path of the expert, the path of people who have done it before me. And I'm a very big proponent of not reinventing the wheel. However, my own path means that I listen to myself. That was yesterday's affirmation, intuition, trusting my intuition. When I listen to my intuition, I feel safe. Because my intuition means that I am in alignment with my higher self and I am untouchable, right? Even when things go wrong, it's not that they're going wrong. It's that there's something that is out of alignment with what my ego thinks ought to be happening. So even then, I feel safe. This is a practice, right? Every day I practice. I accept the consequences of following my own path. 
So the consequences, some people might judge as negative and others, like myself, might judge as simply being as they are without any judgment at all. Like me having my surgery, one of the consequences of having surgery is that I have to be down for a couple of weeks, not being really active. And I'm um, following my own path. I don't feel like I want to be... Um, I feel like I want to rest, but I don't feel like I want to be bedridden. Like, I don't want to feel weak. I don't want to feel weak. Even though I've had major surgery, I don't want to feel weak. I'm not going to feel weak, you know? And the consequences of that, I'm experiencing a tremendous recovery. Other people are telling me, slow down, slow down. You're going too fast, you know? Their experience is that when they push, they feel bad. For me, my experience, I've had surgery twice. Not the exact surgery, but major abdominal surgery for the same thing. I've been cut in the same area three times, right? So my experience is that I push forward according to how my body feels. The consequences are, I'm strong. I walked for an hour yesterday, nonstop. Wow. That's awesome, you know? Anyway, sorry, getting off track. I'm a little, I'm really energized today. So I'm going to try to get this video short again because I think it's helpful to kind of get to the point. So let me get back to it. Um, I expect positive, joyful outcomes to all of my choices. Huh, just said that. <laughs> I have faith in myself and I trust that I am capable. I do. My sense of power and trustful optimism, trustful optimism being the key word for me here, meaning it's not optimism that is based on positivity and being positive for the sake of positive, but it is being trustful for the sake of trusting truthfully, like wholly, being fully invested in trusting my higher self, trusting God, source, goddess, trusting the universe. I trust the universe. I trust the universe and that's what makes me optimistic, you know? It makes me makes it easy for me to allow others to experience the joy and power of taking responsibility for their own moods, their own reactions, and their own behaviors. This is a practice, to let others be themselves and to trust that they are perfect, perfect enough to be worthy of making their own decisions, seeing themselves as divine, seeing them as divine, knowing that whatever choice they've made is right, not just for them, but also right for me. However, they're seeing me, allowing them to see me in this moment without buckling under their judgment, right? Knowing who I am, letting them be who they are, letting them see me as they want to see me and still knowing that I am powerful, this is a practice, you know? This is an amazing affirmation, actually. I trust myself as a being fully aligned with Source, and I am aware, know, and understand that the outside world is an outpicturing of my beliefs. Doing my shadow work, doing my inner child work, is the way that I cultivate and nurture my belief garden. Our beliefs grow in our mind. Our mind is a fertile garden that needs to be nurtured. If we have wild beliefs that are growing and they are negative and debilitating, we got to get in there and pull out those weeds and we have to nurture the ground. Not with Roundup weed killer. We need to go in there and nurture with love. 
through shadow work and inner child work. If you want help learning how to do shadow work or inner child work, you need to call me because that's where I thrive. That's where I live. I be cultivating my garden every day with my shadow work and my inner child work. <laughs> and you can see the results. <laughs> I'm giddy with pleasure. All right. Um, I trust myself as being fully aligned with Source, and I'm aware, know, and understand that the outside world is an outpicturing of my beliefs, and what I experience in the material world is a reflection of my own internal dynamics. I cultivate my garden, my inner garden. I cultivate it. I practice loving me every day in the mornings with my meditations, and then during the day with my thought processes. I check in with my higher self, with my higher mind, with my angels and my spirit guides throughout the day, all the time, every day. I check in and I bring me back to me because believe me, there are times when my mind, my lower mind takes over and I become afraid, I become frenetic, I become stressed out. I, I reel that shit in, man. I reel that shit in and I say, I sit myself down and I say, Crystal Lynn Bell, who are you? Who are you? Do you remember who you are? I'm a divine being of God. And even when the fear is so strong that I'm like, I don't know who you're talking to. I don't know who's talking to me. <laughs> when I get afraid like that, I nurture myself, I parent myself, and I say, it's okay, it's all right. Go ahead and be afraid. I let my emotions run their full spectrum. I let them run the full spectrum, and I parent myself like a child in need. I'm not afraid to admit that I am a child and that I need comfort I need support. I need love. I need somebody to, to hold me. And sometimes I have to do that for myself. Sometimes I can let my friends do it. You know, sometimes it's a lover. But it's always, always first and foremost me, myself, that does it for me. Yeah. Okay. I accept responsibility. I accept the responsibility to look within for solutions to help me change the outside world. That's what I'm talking about. All right. I did go long again today, but I hope it was helpful. I hope you are doing very well in this program. When you need help, reach out to me. You're um, offered a complimentary discovery session with me where we sit down and we talk about your needs and your desires. And we strategize to help you know what it is, or like we devise a plan to help you bring in what it is you desire. All right, so let's set up that appointment whenever you're ready. And um, yeah, all right, my friends, I'm wishing you not a fearless day, I'm wishing you a present day, a day where you feel present and in tune with your surroundings. I'm wishing you a day that you feel grounded without food, without excess food, you know? Like, you don't need food to ground you. You don't need medication to ground you. You don't need alcohol to ground you. Breath. I'm wishing you a present day full of life balancing and grounding breath. Bye for now, my friends. <laughs>